Hi, my name is Justin Cowan and welcome to the studio at Creekside Sound. We just built this studio and along the way I took a series of videos to show how we built it, uh, more so for myself, uh, but I figured once I was done I may as well share. So feel free to comment, ask any questions. You can reach out to me via email at uh, justin at creeksidesound.com. Uh, you can also check me out online at www.creeksidesound.com and also on Facebook and Instagram. So uh, here's a series of videos. Uh, when it's done, I'll take you for a walk around uh, now that all the instruments and everything are set up. And uh, let me know what you think. Thanks. So I don't know if I'm going to keep up with this or not, but uh, this is the beginning of the new studio at Creekside Sound. Um, we are just in the process of starting to turn it into a studio. It was built as a part of our new house and uh, this was left till after we moved into the house to, uh, to finish the studio and make it usable. So um, essentially where we are is above the garage. Uh, we built a four foot knee wall on top of the garage so it would give us the full uh, width of the garage. It's 24 feet wide by 28 feet long. Um, the exterior dimensions that makes it about a foot smaller in both directions uh, once you're inside. There's nothing really special about the room as it is um, in terms of it being a studio. Uh, my intentions were to build it as a room and then build a studio in the room um, for better or for worse but uh, I will try and keep up with doing some more uh, videos just so I can see the progress and uh, for future reference, I guess. Um, essentially, all we've done so far is, uh, as you can see, a little bit of painting on the gable ends and uh, the knee wall that runs across here and down the stairwell. Um, the this end wall here uh, will have acoustic treatment on it. That's why all it's painted is the edges, just so if the treatment doesn't run the whole way, it's not just a, a blank un, uh, unpainted wall. Um, this wall, because of the stairs coming up and what will be a heat pump above the window, won't have be, won't be completely treated, so I just painted the whole wall uh, just to be safe. That knee wall over in this corner will eventually be an isolation and drum booth. Um, so that knee wall will change to a full wall um, for at least part of it. My plan is to uh, treat the knee walls on both sides, this gable end wall and the gable end behind me um, as best I can. Uh, basically, I'm going to stud the uh, the gable or the uh, the knee walls up and use some soundproofing insulation covered by fabric and same thing on the end wall and then basically hang a bunch of panels on this gable end and uh, around the outside and inside of, of the, uh, the booth which will be in this corner here. Um, for the ceiling we've used it's a CRC or, or a USG ceiling tile. Um, it's called the Arctic is the model it's an NRC of 0.7, which is higher than the, like a standard tile is 0.5 or 0.55. Um, and from my research, it show, it seems that uh, right around 0.7 is when you can really start to hear a difference in the room. So this, these seem to be the most cost effective for the amount of, uh, of, um, sound reduction in the room uh, that you could get. I wasn't so much concerned about sound transfer outside the room, uh, given that it's upstairs in the garage and, and uh, there's really nothing. The only part that's attached to the house is down down the stairs. So this is all, all this, uh, this um, vaulted piece is all just outside. And uh, obviously above, there's nothing above us. So I wasn't so much concerned with the ceiling tiles of uh, eliminating noise from getting out, um, more so just controlling what's in the room. Uh, for the floor, I've just finished prepping that. You can kind of see the lines around the seams. That's just because unfortunately the floors um, being OSB, they sat for a while before the roof got put on the house when we were building. 
so all the seams swelled up a bit so in order to get a nice level floor I've had to sand down um, all the ridges we had to do the same thing through the whole rest of the house um, it's time consuming but it uh, seemed to turn out well uh, with the floor all we're going to use on the floor here is uh, vinyl plank um, we're going to floor the whole thing and then build our knee walls and stuff on top but it's just going to be uh, going to be vinyl plank flooring um, and then probably some rugs and stuff underneath the gear and, and whatever gets brought up uh, as you can see over here, we have some power and some network cabling run through the floor. So there's actually a, uh, a couple pieces of conduit that run from where you see them in the floor to basically in the wall behind that heater. Um, it's only a stretch of about five or six feet, but it gets it into the wall so that then um, cables aren't just draped across the wall. Um, obviously, this is then going to be where the desk sits. So it'll give me, it's not quite at the 38% of the room, but uh, we, in order to um, make the most of the room and also try as best we can to, to uh, make for a good listening position, um, that's where we settled on for the desk. Um, so like I said, I'm going to try and keep up with this a little bit and uh, more for my own reference than anything um, so that uh, once the studio is built, I'll remember what's behind it and I'll be able to change things around and know, know what's underneath of it. But anyway, that's a quick overview of where we are so far at Creekside Sound. So this is another update on the build for the Creekside Sound studio. As you can see, we've got... Uh, about half the flooring in and uh, all the ceiling tiles are now in um, so we're, we're making some progress you also notice all the lumber that's in here uh, what we decide to do before we finished um, we're still missing our heat pump there was a little snafu there but um, so that's going to be going in hopefully this coming week um, but what we wanted to do before we got finished floor in is build this part of the booth um, extending this knee wall up for the portion that's going to be on the booth. Now it's fairly straightforward for the most part. There's just one little hiccup that we came into and that is um, dealing with the drop ceiling. I wanted to have drop ceiling in here for its the acoustic properties of the tiles themselves, uh, but it's also caused some issues because I want to leave the room as a whole room so that down the road I can move things around or um, do what I want with so that creates complications with the drop ceiling um, and that we don't have anywhere to run our top plate that we can firmly fasten in so what I've decided to do is cut the top plate and use threaded rod as you can see here now that rods gonna get cut down but the threaded rod is gonna go up through one of the ceiling tiles um, that second well, the first full one in um, it's going to go through that tile and attach into some strapping that's going to run between two, um, two roof trusses up there. So there's only about four inches above the tile, so it, the, uh, the threaded rod doesn't need to be very long, so that should help eliminate some of the movement. And if I need, I can, if I need to, I may even add a second one in the middle, but this is a fairly short run, so I don't think I'm going to here. If this works and gives us a good steady bearing on this run, I'll probably do the same thing on the two other walls, especially uh, the wall coming out from the knee wall um, because it's going to have its full run on drop ceiling and I want to make sure that uh, that has some bearing up top because otherwise all it's going to be tied into is the floor and, uh, and there's also a door in that wall. So, that one may have a fair bit of threaded rod in it um, just to hold it up into the up into the ceiling uh, so that I just wanted to give a quick update on what we're doing just uh, again more so for my purposes down the road so that once all this is finished I have some sort of documentation as to how to disassemble or, or modify if need be um, then I'll be able to see what what has gone into it but if this uh, does get posted, then it might be something for somebody else to consider as well. So here's another update on the studio at Creekside Sound. 
Uh, we've made a little more headway. We've got the floor finished. Uh, we also have this knee wall added on to. It's kind of hard to see with the video, um, but we built that up um, so that this booth, we wouldn't have to build a whole second wall. So you can see it's just kind of sitting on top of the existing knee wall and uh, tied in. I think I've talked about that before, but um, so we got the drywall on that, got some wiring in place that's going to run over top of the door, which will sit, um, sit right kind of as you come up to the top of the stairs. So there'll be a light switch um, coming off that wire. Got all that done. Like I said, floor done. And uh, now we're moving on to framing the booth itself. So again, we're having to deal with the drop ceiling. So we did the same thing um, on this corner here that you can see beside the smoke detector. Um, did the same thing with the threaded rod to make sure that that stays somewhat attached. There's still a little bit of wiggle to it, but all that wiggle is is the uh, the hole that goes through the, the ceiling tile and the uh, the strapping up on top is a little wider than the threaded rod itself, so it just gives it a little bit of wiggle room naturally, but it's, it's not much at all. So what I've done is I've actually, because with this type of floor, it's a floating floor, so they say not to... Um, not to screw anything down to it. So what I've actually done to secure the bottom plate is first off, I use some of the sill gasket here. It's three and a half inch meant for going under a two by four. Um, so I put that underneath mainly just to protect the floor that goes underneath. But then underneath of the floor, I drilled out a hole that gives about a quarter inch the whole way around the screw and then screwed down through that. So although the plate is attached to the floor, the floor underneath it still has some room to shift because there's uh, there's some room around the screw. So the, the plate is in nice and tight. Um, it's in the studs up the wall and again into the strapping um, up, the, up the side, the same strapping that's holding the drywall on, up the vaulted part. So we essentially have the rough shape of our drum enclosure or ISO booth now. Um, it's roughly, we'll say nine feet by nine feet for argument's sake. Um, so we'll have a pane of glass go in this end here so that as I'm working at the desk, I can see, um, see into the booth. The other side will be pretty much closed in, which is gonna look a little funny. Um, but we'll have this, uh, French door in it as a door. So, um, I'm trying to strike a balance of having enough sound deadening inside and enough visibility. So given that the, uh, just walk through where the door would be, given that you're just looking out to the side of the room, I'm going to box that in, have my glass look out, um, towards the desk over in this area so that's uh that's the plan going forward so just a little update on where we're at as of right now so the next step will be to frame this wall that comes across um frame the door in and then figure out what size glass i'm putting in for the glass and frame that up and uh and then i can drywall the outside and and then work on the uh, the new walls and that end gable wall so it's coming along back here at the studio build at creekside sound um, as you can see here, the drum booth looks a little different than I had originally thought. Uh, I decided to go with two um, windows for the ISO booth, mainly just for visibility. If uh, there's a live band in here, um, then presumably the drummer, but whoever's in there will be able to see a little bit more. Um, I will be building a panel to fit in one or both of those windows in case it's a little too lively in the room. Um, but I think this is the better option to have more flexibility overall. Um, as you can see, I've also framed up the side walls on both sides, and that's all ready to go for insulation and some wiring. And I've started on the gable end as well. Uh, there's really not a whole lot else to mention. Um, one thing I did do is on the walls the whole way around, I left a half inch air gap between the existing wall and the new wall um, for 
basically just to prevent any rattling if if the drywall is bowed at all or if one of the studs is bowed there won't be any contact between them and uh, just to avoid any kind of rattling especially when bass guitars and drums are are live in the room so that's where we're at right now should be finishing up this wall this week and getting some wiring from the desk position here where you can see the conduit drilled on the floor um, and put through the wall into the ISO booth. That's really the only wiring I'm running through the room. The studio is small enough that um, beyond that I can have shorter, cleaner runs by just laying the cable on the floor than I, than I would by going through the wall. So um, I am not going to get too elaborate with with wiring in this studio. I do have some network cable coming from downstairs um, and then some uh, a 20 pair snake cable that'll go through the wall with maybe a few other lines going into the booth as well. But other than that, we're uh, keeping it pretty simple. So that's uh, an updated view of what's going on here at Creekside Sound. Just a quick update here at the studio. The uh, booth is almost finished. We have it all framed up and I decided to go with the tongue and groove pine as opposed to drywall because I don't like crack filling and I don't like drywall. So this was a good way around that and I think it looks kind of cool. So there is the uh, the booth as it stands right now. I have my uh, 20 pair snake run through the wall as well as an HDMI um, for some video feed. I also have lighting done inside um, I think the single pot light is going to be enough light um, I also have my glass cut which is sitting over here ready to go in so that will go in the two holes there obviously those are two four foot by three foot holes for the glass um, and they're basically just going to be sandwiched in there which I'll show later but um, they're going to be sandwiched in the whole way around with a sill going around and the sill extending on the inside far enough that I can set a panel uh, inside if I find there's all the glass makes it too uh, makes for poor acoustics inside then I can uh, I can always add panels inside to deaden it down a little bit so that's a quick update uh, more to come back here uh, I just finished doing some insulating so this is just basically rock sole safe and sound um, or rock wall safe and sound Nothing too fancy, um, but I have it all through the room now. Um, so these three walls are completely done. So what I need to do now is build some panels to put on this wall. I need to calm that down a little bit, um, but I can't frame it up because it would interfere with the stairwell. So I need to just frame up panels and put them there. I'm gonna leave this wall for now and see what uh how i find it sounds with it left open um, and the other side of this booth down here will have a couch and some other stuff on it so i'm not too worried about about that side um and like i said before i'm going to build some panels for in the booth as well um to put up over the glass if we need to so anyway just another update so we've got some of our fabric wall up uh on the long uh, short wall as well as this wall here and it's looking pretty good um, But we we're just kind of making it up as we went along So I figured I'd take a minute and just kind of go over what we're doing to put that up and so basically on all these long straight walls We've cut the fabric horizontally. So we roll it out and we're just running um, The width of the fabric is enough to do the the height of the wall so all we're doing is is we've ripped just a half inch piece of it's actually strapping that we're going to use later for our uh, panels and it just so happened the strapping is one by four and the insulation is three inches deep so uh, one by four actually meaning one by three and a half means that we cut can cut a half inch off the strapping and we can use it here so basically all we're doing is wrapping the top edge around you can see um, that piece of ripped strapping um, or the piece that we ripped off the strapping uh, and we're just wrapping the top edge of the fabric around it so you can see I'm kind of about halfway along stapling this over then we'll wrap it around one more time and it's just going to give it even tension the whole way across the top rather than getting ripples uh, if we were to just staple it on the top 
and it gives a bit of a finished kind of look up top with that with that rolled over line so we don't have to worry about any kind of trim to hide staples or or the end of the fabric or anything so uh once we get that up or once we get that rolled up then we just pick it up and and we're just using brad nails to uh to brad nail it to the wall and i don't even think i'm gonna do anything to cover them you can hardly even see them unless you're right up right up close to them then you can see them but from any distance you're not even going to notice so I'm not even going to bother covering them, but I just figured uh, where there's no real book on this that I'd take a second and document this just uh, for future reference. Here we are with another update from Creekside Sound. Uh, we're getting there. I've got uh, all my walls built um, and baseboard trim on the windows and all the plugs are built out except for that one I need to figure out how to get that in the wall um, but we're uh, we're getting their glasses in I think that was in the last update but um, anyway so I figured I'd just uh, give a quick uh, a quick recap of what I did on the walls I, I believe I had uh, my last video showed kind of how we were hanging the, the uh, fabric but I figured in this video I'd show you how we kind of trimmed it out um, because we were only using um the the wrap technique for the uh for the vertical for the straight vertical walls and not these um angled walls made it a little difficult to make it look nice and clean and then also we had the problem like you can see here where uh, we had seams in the fabric where it overlapped and we couldn't run the whole the whole width and um, there's another one over here uh, where we had to clean them up somehow. So basically what we did for all of that is we just took a piece of, of wood. Some of it's, uh, the vertical stuff is just ripped down two by four or two by six. And the other stuff is just the same stuff we were using for, um, wrapping that I showed earlier. We just wrapped that in some extra fabric we had left over and basically brad nailed it over the seams and, uh, and up the, the vaults. And I think that, uh, as you can see here, it gives a pretty clean look, nice sharp lines. Uh, the gray or the the beige stuff is a little harder to make it look good. If you get up real close, you can still see the the ripples and stuff, but the black stuff hides the shadows, and it doesn't look perfect. But hey, I think it's good enough. Um, anyway, so it really helped to get some nice clean lines. So we're uh, we're just about ready to start moving stuff in. My desk arrived uh, last last week. I had that custom built by a friend uh, who does a lot of woodworking. So I gave him some measurements and some plans that I had drawn up. So I think that's gonna, gonna work well. It's two six unit racks up top and two 12s on the bottom. So it should give me lots of room. Um, it's quite a deep desk and the width between the two uh, the two racks up top is wide enough to fit my X32, which I use for monitoring. Um, I'll do a video a little later about the reasons why I did certain things, um, as opposed to others. Um, I, I, this is a second studio I've built. My first one was more geared towards, uh, live, uh, well, jam and rehearsal kind of thing. Uh, whereas this one is a lot more uh, geared towards the recording side. and Anyway, so I, I can give some um, some ideas as to what, why I did what I did. Um, but anyway, there's still a little bit left to be done, but we're on the home stretch. I've still got to get my curtains up on the windows, um, get this door in the booth, uh, and a couple things tidied up in there. Um, I've got some panels to go on this wall. But uh, overall, we are reaching the home stretch, and I'll probably start to move stuff in here very shortly, and kind of tidy some stuff up as I as I go. So that's uh, just a quick update, and I'll be back with more. So we'll just do a quick walk around the studio now. Um, I have all my gear set up. So when you come to the top of the stairs, you'll see the drums set up here. Uh, they're set up in the room which is where I normally track unless there's a full band in, and then I'll put them in the in the booth, uh, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, but this is our, uh, our Tama Superstar Hyperdrive kit. It's actually a six-piece kit. Uh, the 
Other Tom is up there on top of the pork pies, which is a four piece 13, 16, 24 kit. Um, but yeah, we like to leave these out on the floor so we can mic the room up a little bit as well. Um, unless, like I said, there's a full band in, in which case they would be over here in the booth, which is big enough to fit the full six piece kit. Um, but usually we use this for um, acoustic instruments like guitars, mandolins, um, vocals, that sort of thing will come in here. Um, it's a fully treated room and uh, it sounds pretty good. Um, even with the drums in here, it still sounds good. You just have to, uh, you just have to uh, fake the, the uh, room, uh, the room mics, but um, again, there's they are out on the floor. Um, we also have the keyboard here, which can be used either by itself or through MIDI. So coming over to this corner here, we kind of have Guitar World. Uh, we have our bass amp, some guitars on the floor, and that's a, a clone of a little AC4 with a 112 cab, and it's got a uh, green beret speaker in it. It's a uh, model after the uh, for a green back. Um, got some storage here for mics and cables and stuff, and uh, then obviously we have our our desk here. This is where all obviously the mixing happens. Um, the X32 is there for monitoring, so that doesn't get used. The preamps in the console don't get used. It's just mainly for writing in automation and uh, and for monitoring. So I can run a bunch of different monitor mixes for either in-ear monitors or or over-the-ear um, headphones. They can be used, um, and everybody can control their own mix too if they want. Or I can mix the the monitors from the from the, the desk. Then over here we have a bit of a lounge area. We have some uh, little mini fridge and a Keurig with coffee and tea and stuff like that. And uh, it's a good place just for, for hanging out and for chatting and songwriting and whatever else. And, uh, and then we're back around here to the booth again. So it's not a huge room. It's about 24 by 28, like I said before, and some of the other stuff, but um, it's certainly a nice size for what we need. And I think it's going to do us for a long time. Well, if you've made it this far, congratulations. It uh, I know it wasn't the most thrilling video, but it gives you a bit of a glimpse into what we did here at Creekside Sound to build the studio, a little bit of a look behind the walls and that sort of thing. So if you have any more questions, like I said before, uh, feel free to put them in the comments below, or you can reach out to me through Instagram or Facebook or, uh, or even through my email. It's just justin at creeksidesound.com. I hope to do more of these videos, maybe having a look at some of the gear around the studio and maybe even get into some mixing stuff, but we'll see how it goes. So for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you again.